Hello scholars, my name is Dr. Kara Sillen, and the goal of this channel is to make academic subjects easier to understand. If you haven't already done so, please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe. This helps me to make the videos that you want each and every day. In the last video, we covered avoidant restrictive food intake disorder. In this video, we're going to talk about anorexia nervosa, so let's begin. In order to be diagnosed with anorexia nervosa, an individual has to have the following characteristics according to the DSM. A, the individual is restricting foods and or drinks that provide energy to the body. This deprivation is so significant for the individual's age that it impacts development and the physical health of the person. This deprivation leads to significantly low body weight, which is defined as weight that is much less than those around them. B, the person has a significant fear of becoming fat or gaining weight even when they have a significant low body weight. C, the individual does not experience their true body shape or weight in a way that others do. They may evaluate themselves in a manner that is too focused upon the body or weight and they generally don't recognize the seriousness of the low body weight. A clinician will want to specify if the anorexia nervosa is the one restrictive type in which the person does not binge eat or purge their food within the last three months. They have not used laxatives, diuretics, enemas, or have made themselves vomit. Those with the restrictive type tend to fast, diet, and exercise to an extreme. Number two, binge eating or purging type meaning in the last three months the individual has made themselves vomit, has used laxatives, diuretics, or enemas, or has taken part in binge eating along with a purging behavior. Now, it's fairly normal for the two types to cross over while the person is struggling with the disorder. A clinician will also want to specify if the person is in partial remission, which means the individual at one time has been diagnosed with anorexia nervosa but has had a significant period of time where they have not had a low body weight. Having a fear of gaining weight or becoming fat or not being able to see one's body shape correctly is still present. They will also want to specify if the person is in full remission. This means when the individual has once been diagnosed with anorexia nervosa, but no longer has any of the features of this disorder. The clinician will Again, want to specify the patient's current severity as well. For adults, the current severity is determined by the World Health Organization. To be considered in mild severity, the BMI is greater than or equal to 17 kilograms. To be in the moderate, the BMI has to be between 16 and 16.99 kilograms. Severe BMI is 15 to 15.99 kilograms and then extreme severity is BMI is less than 15 kilograms. So it is more difficult to look at a child's severity as determined according to the BMIs because of the given growth and development chart. That also needs to be considered as well. Anorexia nervosa tends to come about after someone has lost a significant amount of weight or in the case of children and adolescents, they fail to get to the expected weight for their height. It can be difficult for a professional to decide what is an appropriate weight and what isn't because there are different expectations given professional organizations. Body mass index, BMI, is a typical way of measuring accurate weight. It has been decided by the CDC, Center for Disease Control, and the WHO, the World Health Organization, or WHO, that a BMI of 18.5 kilograms as the lower limits of normal body weight is what is mostly accept accepted. Therefore, an adult with a BMI of 17 kilograms or less is considered to be significantly low weight. Again, it's more difficult to assess significantly low body weight for children and adolescents. The CDC tends to use a BMI below the 5th percentile as labeling whether someone is underweight. It is important when judging the weight of children to look at body build, psychological disturbances, as well as weight history. 
These children or adolescents tend to have a great fear of gaining weight and becoming fat, and losing weight does not generally help these individuals. Adolescents and adults may not talk about the fear of gaining weight, though. The importance of making a decision about whether someone has anorexia nervosa depends not only on the weight, but also nutritional deficiencies, observational data, the patient's health history, and a physical exam will want to be done. Individuals with anorexia nervosa tend to feel as though they are overweight, even when it's obvious that they aren't. Sometimes individuals will realize that they're thin, but they'll complain that specific body parts are fat. Individuals with anorexia may have lots of different techniques that they use to judge the size and shape of their body. Depending upon how the judgment goes, this can greatly influence the person's self-esteem. Generally, any form of weight loss is seen as an achievement, an example of one's own self-restraint. A majority of individuals that have anorexia nervosa don't quite realize how medically dangerous their low weight is. They tend to deny that there is a problem. It is important when gaining a patient's history that family members are interviewed as to what has happened within the past. There is no doubt that self-starvation and purging food can create disastrous medical issues. When someone does not get a nutritional diet and is led to starvation, this will affect the major organ systems. There can be physiological problems in the body as well as problems given one's vital signs. If someone with a disorder is treated with nutrition, a majority of the body issues can be reversed. Sometimes, loss of bone mineral density may not be reversed, though. When individuals with anorexia nervosa are extremely underweight, they tend to become depressed, anxious, have trouble sleeping, can be socially withdrawn, or irritable. The patient will need to be evaluated for major depression if the symptoms continue for weeks. It is also fairly normal to see characteristics of obsessive compulsiveness as a person relates to their food and eating. Some individuals with the disorder will also hoard food or collect recipes. Thinking about food tends to take up quite a bit of space in the person's mind throughout the day. Those individuals with anorexia nervosa might also have concerns about where they eat food and whom they eat around. They may have a strong desire to control their environment, like the way they keep things, or be restrained when it comes to their emotions. Those individuals that are of the purging type tend to show some impulsiveness and are more likely to abuse drugs or alcohol. They may also misuse medications by shifting dosages so they can gain or lose weight. Those that have type 1 diabetes may reduce their insulin. 0.4% of young girls are diagnosed with anorexia nervosa each year in the U.S. It's very difficult to analyze young men as they are different to pinpoint and they don't generally follow the signs and symptoms of young girls. For those that are diagnosed with anorexia nervosa, a majority of them are between the ages of puberty to young adulthood. The cases typically come about due to a high-level stressor within the individual's life. Some individuals tend to recover from anorexia nervosa after one episode of it, whereas others struggle for the rest of their lives. Um, hospitalization is sought for those that cannot restore their weight and to deal with their current medical condition. Anorexia nervosa tends to appear in cultures where thinness is valued. When a person is in a career that values thinness, this also increases the risk of the disorder. Athletes and models tend to be at a much higher risk than other occupations. There is also a higher risk of anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa when there is a first degree relative that have it. The disorders are also found more often in monozygotic twins if one twin has it as compared to dizygotic twins. Anorexia nervosa tends to be seen more often in post-industrialized, high-income countries like Japan, Australia, many European nations, New Zealand, and the United States. Ethnic groups like Hispanics, African Americans, and Asians are not as impacted as whites. For those girls that do have anorexia nervosa, their periods will be highly impacted. If it occurs before puberty, it may delay puberty. Other complaints that may surface may include but are not limited to an inability to handle the cold, being extremely fatigued, constipation, excess energy, or abdominal pain. 
Others may experience a slow heart rate, a low blood pressure, or hypothermia. When the individual is put back onto liquids and a nutritional food, they may experience swelling in the extremities. If the case is super severe, the skin of the individual might also appear yellow. Those that purge or self-vomit will have enlarged salivary glands as well as tooth enamel erosion. Unfortunately, the rate of suicide for anorexia nervosa is 12 per 100,000 individuals. It is very important to assess the risk of suicide given any person that has the disorder. Mental illnesses that most tend to co-occur with anorexia nervosa are depressive disorders, bipolar disorders, and anxiety disorders. So we've come to the end of our video. I want to thank you so much for staying with me, and I really appreciate you. I want you to have a wonderful day, and I will talk with you soon.